Okay, just like I'm saying, um, when um, uh, this night, when starting with uh, um, root cause analysis, and we are going to use a fishbone diagram to illustrate how um, root cause analysis is being uh, mapped out or it's been analyzed. So here using the fishbone diagram with this example, a company after their brainstorming session, they decided to use um, a fishbone diagram to solve the increased error uh, in their invoice. So, to solve this problem using a root cause, uh, using fishbone diagram, we look at the cause and the error, uh, the cause and the effects. So here, there is so much error in the invoice. Looking at the head, here is the head, increase invoice error. That is the problem they are solving. And how do you solve this problem? You look at the body of this uh, um, diagram. You can see the environment, you can see the equipment, you can see the method, you can see the man, you can see the measure, you can see the materials. These are factors that will help a process to work very well. All these six factors. When all these six factors are working very well, then the process is working very well. But when one of the three categories or the, these uh, six uh, factors, when one of them is not working well, then there must be a problem in the system. It's just like a whole body. When the hand is having a problem, it's going to affect every part of their body. The whole pain, the pain from your hand is going to affect the whole body. When you're having a pain in your leg, it's going to affect the whole body. When you're having a backache or stomach upset or uh, a chest pain or headache, it's going to affect the whole body. So that's the scenario. We are using the fishbone diagram that any injury to any part of the whole system is affecting the whole system. So, and let's look at the whole uh, factors. Look at the method. The method here is that uh, why there is problem. Looking at the method is a cumbersome process and the manual entry. This is why there is process, there, this is why there is problem within the method they are using to, to generate their invoice, is manual process. So in order to solve this problem, this cumbersome process, they need to um, automate it. And this manual problem, uh, manual data entry need to be automated. And with that, this is going to reduce error. Then we look at the equipment. How can we make sure that uh, we are not having a problem from the equipment? Looking at the way they are doing it um, already, they have uh, inadequate printers. And uh, a system is not integrated. How do we solve this problem? To solve this problem is to make sure that they have enough printers that is working very well. And to make sure that the system is highly integrated. That is the how to solve the issue of equipment. Now let's look at the environment. The environment where they are working where the workers are working, there is poor 
agnomatics and uh, noisy office. The office is very noisy. So how do you solve this problem? They need to work in less noisy environment. Not that they will be walking and they'll be hearing uh, um, noises from everywhere, siren and a lot of, you know. So they need less noisy environment so that the workers can concentrate. Then let's look at the material. Here they have a, a poor paper quality and delay uh, paper supply. They don't have enough. They don't have enough paper. It comes early. It comes late. And even when they deliver, they deliver poor uh, paper quality. So during the printing, it doesn't print well. So to do to to make sure that um, such thing don't happen, they must be having delivery on time. And then make sure that they are using the appropriate size of papers. If, if they, are, they mean to use A4, they must be using A4, not um, any other size of um, paper quality. Then, we look at measure. There is no um, adequate regulation in, in place. There is poor audit system. And this because of that, the, the workers, they don't care because they are not being regulated. Nobody cares about what they are doing. And then we look at man. Man is the, the workers. What is uh, their own problem? There is low morale. They don't pay them. They're always owing them. At the end of the month, after working, you find out they don't pay you. So when they are working, they don't have a good morale to work. Another thing is uh, increased workload. They don't pay them, and the workload is much. And again, there is poor technical support. These are the problems that's making the company to have invoice error. To fix this invoice error, the company need to sort out all these uh, problems. And once they sort out these problems, there will never be uh, increase, any more increase. They, they won't record any error or it's going to be highly minimized. So this is how we use a, a fish bone, bone diagram to analyze uh, uh, problem using uh, root cause analysis. Then we are going to move to another technique. And the technique we are going to look into now is a gap analysis. Gap analysis is um, very important techniques in business analysis. A gap is a problem, issue, or challenge, and could be an opportunity for improvement. Gap analysis compared to different states of something, the current state and the desired state. So that is how gap analysis works. You're already working with gap analysis, um, in your assignments, the gap analysis uh, is part of it. So you already know what gap analysis is. And uh, just like I said, they use it to compare two states, the current state and the future state, which is uh, a cis and to be. And then you find out the gap between them, which becomes opportunity for the organization to improve. So let's look at this example. The following example illustrates the step that have been followed to analyze why it takes too uh, long for the food to be served in a restaurant. 
a fish bone analysis was conducted to identify the cause of the slow service delivery. Here the company, the customers are complaining that it takes uh, much time to serve their food. Every time they, they, they place an order, it takes longer time to serve. They keep on waiting and they, they are not happy about it. So what is um, what what is the the um, the problem? How do we solve this problem using gap analysis? First, let's look at the problem. Customers complain that the food takes too long to be served. What is the current situation? The food takes, on average, 14 minutes to be served. And what is the desired outcome? The food should be served within 11 minutes of ordering. So, and what is the gap? The gap here is three minutes. So how do we uh, bridge this gap? How do we re remove this gap? How do we remove this waste of time? It's just like what you people are, are already doing uh, with the housing estate. Now, let's look at the actions and requirements. What do we do? Obtain more opinion from the customers about their experience. That's the first thing you need to do. Doing that is a data gathering. You need to gather the data. When you are trying to obtain an opinion from the customers, you can use survey, you can use one-on-one -on -one to find out their experience. Then still um, in, in data gathering still, ask employees what would help them to provide faster customer service. So when you gather all this data, you analyze them, you find out that the way to bridge this gap, to make sure you remove this uh, uh, three minutes gap, then you train employees to provide faster service. That's how gap analysis work. This is the simplest way to, to, to analyze or to explain gap analysis. Now we are going to move to another um, technique. And this is um, called Moscow analysis. These techniques um, help you to prioritize your requirements, making sure that what you have is what um, is contained within your requirement and uh, is uh, prioritized in the order of importance. So in Moscow analysis is divided into four segments. The first segment is that there must be some requirements. The, the product must have is a must, is non negotiable. In the most requirement, is a non negotiable minimum viable product can't be delivered on target date without this. Not legal without it. Unsafe without it. Without this, without this project is not viable. So looking at this, so these are the requirements. If, if the, the project don't have all these requirements, the project cannot hold. And you find out that this requirement must contain 60% of the total effort to deliver this project. So it's a must. So you must classify some of these requirements at this. So it's a no-go area. 
you have to protect this requirement. So that's why some of the requirement classify you put it there. Then you look at other requirements should have important but not vital may be painful to leave out but the solution is still viable may need some kind of uh, a work around some of these are some of the requirements that um, it should have yeah it's very good very very important but not that if you don't have it um the project cannot still go on. You must, you might find a way to navigate, but the project can go on. Another one is uh, could have desirable, but not as important as it should be. Only do if there is extra time and budget. So it, it, these are some of the. Um, requirements that can be added if there is um, extra time. If you, if, if you mean to deliver the project um, in three months and the developers happen to be very fast and deliver the, and finish up the project in, uh, in two months, they can decide to add some, um, some functionalities. Maybe if it's a, 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 a website, a company website, and they didn't um, want to have a, something like blog. So they might say, okay, as we still have time, it's very good to have a blog in a, in a company website in my, so they can use it to be, you know, um, selling their products, I mean, writing articles, I'm talking, uh, uh, sensitizing people about their products and other things. So, Adding blog in the website uh, can be good, but it's not the, the, the major thing in, in the company's website. So these are some of the, the things that uh, is very good, but you can only do that. Only if company decide that we must implement blog as a, pro, as, a, as a project, then that's where blog becomes the center. But when you are implementing the whole website, I don't think blog is, uh, is so necessary. So that is how it is. Okay, won't have, won't have uh, this time around at all. It means that is, this is no go area. You don't even, these are some of the, these are the boundaries, You're creating a boundary for the project out of budget, you don't have uh, money, you can't, they don't consider because it's out of budget. Nice to have, but has no real impact. So these areas, you don't have to go and waste your time looking at. So some of these things, you list them, but don't go to, you let your developers, they need to know that they need to, they don't need to waste time. They don't need to go to this area because of the um, constraints, financial constraints and time constraints. So that's how you can use a Moscow analysis to um, prioritize your, your requirements. The next technique, which is still very good, is uh, brainstorming. Brainstorming is very, very important. After collecting the, your requirements, analyzing your requirements, and then you want to look for solution, one important um, technique for looking for solution is brainstorming. You come up, you and your team need to come up. Everybody needs to be, you know, brainstorming the best solution that can be used to solve um, that problem. So when you gather different solutions, then you start analyzing it. So this is how brainstorming work. Uh, looking at this, um, at this diagram is a, is a product of uh, brainstorming. 
using uh, idea adhesion. Here, the problem is uh, the streets are really dirty and full of trash. You know, like this is, for instance, if this uh, a, a local government, a local government authority, maybe hire you as a business analyst to solve this problem for them, that the street is very, is very um, dirty and full of uh, trash. So I say, what can you do? You can use brainstorming. Yeah, yeah this thing. We've already known the um, the problem. Looking at this uh, brainstorming that uh, brainstorming map. Let's look at um, the first thing here is. Uh, What is behave? What is a behavior that causes uh, this problem? That's what the first thing you need to to look at. People throw their trash on the ground. What is the likely solution? Put poster. Put up a poster asking people not to throw trash on the ground again. You can then set to put a bill. People should stop throwing their this thing, sensitizing them not to do that. You can see drill that down. What structure causes the behavior? The city does not have enough trash can. What is the solution? Get the city to put, put in more trash can. So they can put more trash can in order to sustain uh, or um, contain the, um, uh, the, the trashes. Because it, it, here you say they don't have enough. So maybe you find out that the trash can they have uh, get filled up easily. So they need to have more to sustain the, the, the amount of trash. Then another um, question is here is, uh, what beliefs cause, uh, cause this uh, behavior? People do not feel respons responsible for clean streets. What is the solution? Start a community club that cleans up the streets on Sunday to help people feel more involved. You see? This is how you use brainstorming to be um, generating ideas on how to solve this problem. Then drilling down, say, what is uh, what's the behavior that causes this problem? People leave large items such as furniture on the street. Solution. Give out tickets for leaving this uh, item on the street. Another question here: What rule or habit cause this? People do not know how to properly dispose of large items such as furniture, or do not feel like um, scheduling a pickup. Solution. Make it easier for people to get rid of uh, these items by starting a service that will come and pick them up at people's home. Like here in UK, uh, people change their furniture very often. And when they do that, they throw it on the streets. Because when you are disposing your, 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 your properties here, you pay council to come and take it. You are throwing your furniture, but you pay to, take, to, to dispose it. So people that don't want to pay can just, maybe in the night, you can just go to the streets and drop their, their furniture. So, or even TV, uh, refrigerators. That's how people just throw their things if they want to change new ones. 
So because when you want to dispose it, you need to pay for them to come and pick it up. And uh, people don't want to, to pay that kind of money. So uh, looking at um, why again, trash falls out uh, of a trash can. Get bigger solution, get bigger trash can. Trash can, can trash cans are too full. Help the city figure out which trash can should be emptied more often. So this is a, you can see here we have different solutions, different ideas. Is a is a, a problem is a, is a, is an outcome of brainstorming. So now you have different ideas and different solutions. <coughs> it's now between you and your team to start um, analyzing every idea to make sure at the end of the day, you are going to pick one idea here or one solution here to solve this problem. But now you have a lot of ideas and solutions. So that's how you use brainstorming to solve uh, uh, a problem as a business analyst. You can equally use the brainstorming, maybe like uh, after generating your, your requirements, if you mean that um, uh, you need a, a, a software, a software solution to solve this problem, you can then use brainstorming. For instance, if it's a um, uh, CRM solution that you are really uh, looking at implementing, we have so many CRM solutions um, vendors. So you use brainstorming to be looking at different um, CRM solution. And to do that, like, just like I say, Gartner will help you to do that. Is 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 still brainstorming when you are looking at different solutions, gathering them. What well, then at the end of the day you analyze them to see which one that uh, best suits your your need. Then when you finish uh, all this um, requirement gathering, uh, requirement analysis and um, uh, prioritizing your requirements and then use brainstorming to select a solution. Then the next thing you need to do is um, to draft your business case. So now uh, we are into business case. So business case will help you to organize a report about the, the problem, the analysis, the solution, the cost benefits, and then you make a, re a recommendation and then you submit your report. And this is where your role as a business business uh, analyst comes to an end. At this point, you've analyzed everything, you've gathered, uh, you analyzed the, solo, the, the problem, you've done requirement uh, gathering, you do requirement analysis, you look at the solution op option, and you look at the cost benefit analysis of every solution you are trying to recommend for the organization, and then you make recommendation. And then you submit it to your line manager, who will then go through it and then validate it. Once it gets validated, then the 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 project can commence. If, if they approve the business case, the project can then commence. You start uh, designing the, the, the solution. So uh, what is um, a business, and let's look at the business analyst uh, uh, point by point. Here is the executive summary. You have to start with the executive summary. It's a, uh, a short summary of the a full business case. Describe at a high level the problem, synopsis of the analysis, and explanation of the recommended solution. 
generally written last as the other section are utilized to complete. In, in, in the executive summary, you, you give a summary, a brief summary of the whole, um, the whole uh, uh, business case. That is the number one thing. So that because some people might, some big men might not have uh, time to, like the, the CEO, if the problem need to, the first thing they need to look at is the executive summary. That will show them everything they need to know at the executive summary. The problem, the analysis, the solution, the business case, you summarize everything. That is the executive summary. Then subsequently in the other, other sections, you then give details. Like after the summary of everything, you come to the problem statement, you give detail about the problem that you are trying to um, address. Then after then you come to the analysis, then you give a breakdown of the analysis, how you call it the, the you, you map, you need to show the, the, the map at this point, what you are going to include in your business and uh, uh, in your business case is now going to be your process maps, the current state, the gap analysis, and the future state. You need to provide all this uh, uh, diagram in the analysis. Then in the solution state, you need to itemize all the solutions you've uh, brainstormed. It, it needs to be like at least four solutions. You need to give company at least four options to choose one. So that's the importance of uh, um, brainstorming. You need to brainstorm up to four solutions and then you you prioritize them. You can use Moscow analysis to prioritize them, or you can use other prioritization, um, like uh, prioritization metrics. I didn't treat it because uh, uh, Moscow analysis here is enough. So you can use Moscow analysis to prioritize your solution. It's not only a requirement. Then after you prioritize um, your solution, you need to uh, state the cause and the effect of every solution. Every solution you need to show how much uh, you can, uh, the company can use to implement that solution, the benefits of that solution, that is the cost and the effect. How much and the benefit? How much and the benefit? Is the first solution you must show how much a solution will cost and the benefit of um, that particular solution. At the end of the whole thing, then you come and recommend one solution. Although you've uh, stated all these four solutions, but you think as a business analyst from your analysis that this solution is the best and you are recommending it um, to the organization to implement this solution because of so, 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 so reason. That is how it works. So I will provide um, an example of um, a written business analysis. So uh, a business case, so you look at it and see how it works. This one here is a template. You can use this template anywhere you want. It's a very clean template. That's how you can, yeah. But I will send them uh, a copy, maybe tomorrow, I will, I will, because you, as a business analyst, it's very, very important to know how business case, uh, uh, case work and how to write it. So I will send a copy of a written one, so you can look at it and see how it works. I would have say I would have given you assignment to write uh, a business case, but 
I don't think it's going to work because I have other um, other assignment that is coming up. So, but I'll send a copy so you look at it and see how it works. So if you have any um, problem or you don't understand it, then you can uh, comment and we'll take it off from there. But this is how a business case works and the, how it looks. So with this uh, explanation and uh, with these templates, I know you are not going to struggle in writing a, a business case with the uh, example I'm going to send to you. Then, now we have uh, written a business case and uh, the, the business case has been approved. So the next thing is start to design your, your solution. And where do you start? You start by writing your user stories from your um, high level requirements. That is your epic list. So you, ha you have to start writing, writing it down. That's where the requirement, uh, that is um, where the defined stage starts. This is the defined stage of a, a, pro, um, a project. This is where it starts. User um, business case normally happen to be uh, the milestone in the initiate stage. If you look at the, the, the diagram I gave you people, uh, the work I gave you, the, the, the breakdown structure I gave you people in the in project management, business case happen to be the, the milestone. So when you reach business case, I think you reach a milestone. So then you're starting another, another segment or another phase. So, what is user story? User story is a tool used in agile software development to capture a description of a software feature from an end user's perspective. So this is why we call it user story is, uh, is how the user, who is going to use this software, who is going to use this, um, this particular functionality in a software, in a website, who is going to use this particular uh, functionality? What does this um, user want to achieve using this particular? How does he look at it? What, so this is what we call user, a story from the user's point of view. That is just uh, why we call it user story. So we are describing this software, a piece of uh, functionality from the user point of view. So the format is this, as a user, how do I, as a user, I want to do this so that I can achieve this benefit. As a, so that's the, the way it works. As um, a user, for instance, let's say you, you are applying to use a a, a, more, uh, a bank, a Zenith bank uh, mobile app as a customer. So now as a customer, as a customer of Zenith bank, I want to log into my account so that I can check my balance and make transfer. So that is what we want to do. So if Zenith Bank is planning to, 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 to build a mobile app, this is what they are going to include. This is how, what they are going to do. They need to build a mobile app that will give, help you, enable you to log into your account and view, uh, view your account and then 
milk transfer. So that's how the user story was. The user story must adhere to the following standard. The standard is called the uh, invest. Yeah, invest means uh, independent. It must stand alone. So the functionality can, can work on its own. You can implement it as a single functionality and add it in a website. For instance, <clears throat> let's say you are trying to implement a blog in a website. You know that a blog can stand on its own in a website. You can decide to remove it and the website still stays. You can start to add it and stay. So meaning that standing alone means that even if you put it or you really can stand on its own within the uh, whole uh, application. Negotiable can be discussed and they refined. So means that um, it can be discussed with the users and then it can be refined. It can be upgraded. The process can be refined or be upgraded. It must valuable. It must add value to the system. It must add value to the software. It must add value to the person using it. The person using it must feel happy after using it. it must have you know, solving a problem. It must be estimable. So it must have a point. You know that in um, in Agile methodology or Scrum, every user story must have a point. A point is the level of difficulties. It will take the developers to do that. If it's high point, it means that it's going to take, it's, it, it, it's complex, it's, it, the, 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 the complexity is high. But if it's low point, it means that the complexity of uh, developing it is low. They can just develop it maybe within a day or two days. What is a high point, it will take them like maybe a week to develop it. So it must be estimable so that they will know that if they're handling this particular uh, user story, they will have enough time to do that. It must be small. Small means that uh, a user story cannot be, you know, in sprint, in sprint is a, a period of time between two weeks to, to one month. So a user story, if is a, a user story cannot be, cannot take more than one month to implement. If it's, if it's taking more than one month to implement that feature, then it's no longer a user story. It has to be broken down again. It must fit in within a sprint. And it must be testable. After implementing it, it must be able to be, so they can be tested and make sure that it's working. So there must be an avenue to test it, to make sure that it conforms to the acceptance criteria. We are coming to the acceptance criteria after user story. So let's look at um, a user story. This is an example of a user story. And if you are planning to write a user story, this is how you write it. As a user, as an account holder, I want to check my balance. That is the action benefit so that I will go into my overdraft and I will avoid incurring charges. Or I will check my account balance so that I can make transfer. So this is how to write user story. So with this, the developer knows what you want to achieve and it becomes very easy for them to code and develop the, the functionality. Then we move to acceptance criteria. 
acceptance criteria is a requirement that must be met in order for a solution to be considered. As acceptance criteria must reach this requirement. You know, this is what the acceptance criteria means. You're looking at the cost attribute, you're looking at the value attribute. You look at the cost, performance, usability, and functionality. That is uh, the uh, areas you, you assess um, a user story. This acceptance criteria is used to measure user story. And to do that, you need to conduct a test, a test called the user acceptance test, UAT. So when you conduct that test, you need to look at whether it pass or fail. If it pass, then you log it that it's passed. And if you fail, you log it that it fails. To do that, you, you must have developed um, a test case scenario or text, um, text plan. A text plan, they contain the, the, accept, the user story, the acceptance criteria, the test case, and the test uh, result. You know, so that's our, our equally show, our equally um, uh, provide a copy of a text plan for you people to see how it looks like. So that's how you do your user story. Most time, the person that does this is a, a tester uh, or quality assurance uh, analyst. At times, a business analysts can do it, but now they are, they are the, the, the kind of uh, trying to, to, to divide the job uh, give the job to uh, quality assurance um, analysts. But as a business analyst, you can conduct a test because uh, you, you, you design the, the requirements. So many companies, they might not, they don't have, um, don't have the resources to hire different um, uh, testers. So in this regard, you'll be the person doing the testing. So that's it. And it, at the end of the day, if the, 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 the user story fails the test, then you need to uh, refer it back to the developers to, to fix the bug. At this time, we call it a bug. I mean, if you feel there is an error, or an error within the, the, um, within the user story. And need to be fixed. And when the user story, the when they they, they 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 fix the error or fix the bug, you need to go through another testing. At this point, you, you call it a regression testing. So, and all these things you track them using um uh um test um, test case you develop or traceability metrics so that's how to write a user story and um, use the acceptance criteria to to test the user story so let's look at this um at the acceptance criteria. Look at this example. Given I have an account and I have registered for the mobile app and I have a valid login pin. When I log in to the app, then I will be presented with an account and all the balance for my account. So this is the acceptance criteria for a mobile app, a banking app. So for instance, during the testing, 
a user logs into the using the valid login pin to log into the app and after logging in you find out that um, the account uh, is not presenting any account balance then means there is an error so if there is a bug and it means the the app does not pass the uh, uat test so you need to go back uh, to the developers to fix the bug and then go through a regression testing. So that's how the user story works. The next thing we are going to look into is um, use case diagram is another technique. Use case diagram is a graphical depiction of a user's uh, possible interaction with a system or with application. A use case diagram shows various use cases and different types of uh, users the system has. Okay. Let's look at this uh, example. Bank ATM is a system or is an application. So what is the use case? For instance, if uh, you are a business analyst and uh, the bank now is uh, trying to reduce the queue within the cashier area. So They've decided that in order to reduce the queue within the cashier area, there's a lot of queue. They need to uh, implement a bank ATM. So that is how bank ATM started. In order to, they are trying to solve a problem of queues within the banking hall. So that's why they started the implementing ATM. So that instead of people going to the queue up in order to receive their money, they can just go to the ATM and withdraw their money without even going inside the bank. So you need to look at, as a business analyst, you need to, 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 to draw the use case diagram, showing how the customers interact with the application and how the bank interacts. You need to, the role the customer is playing and the role the bank is playing. The bank customer is an operator. In this case, we call it call them operator. It's an op operator one. This is the customer, and operator two is the bank. So, what are the roles of the customer? The customer checks balance. The customer um, makes deposit. The customer uh, withdraw cash, and the customer transfer. And uh, about the bank. The banks provide the functionality, makes it possible, that is the ATM. That is the ATM now. Makes it possible for customer to check um, balance. It makes it possible for the customer to deposit form. And makes it possible for the customer to withdraw um, cash. Makes it possible for the customer to transfer form. So these are the areas, the, 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 the parts the bank playing. There are so many other parts the bank plays. So these are the, the, rules. the customer is uh, playing at this point. So, Please uh, mute yourself. The next thing we are going to look into is um, a wireframe.
Wireframe is a simple diagram that represents the skeleton of a website or an application user interface and core functionalities. Now, if you are designing a software, either uh, a mobile application or desktop application, or a web application, you need to wireframe it so that the developers will see the visual representation. It will aid them to have the picture of what is going to, they, are, they are going to do. And equally, help the management know exactly what you are presenting to them, what they are expecting from the application that you are designing. And this is how you do it. You can use um, um, all these uh, tools like uh, Visio, Lucid Chart, and uh, Draw.io to, to do this. So this is a, a wireframe. This is how wireframe works. You can see here, this is um, a YouTube, uh, MyTube, um, a website just like um, YouTube. And you can see here, this is where the video is. And you can see down here, um, it can be shared. After watching the video, you can share it. You can even add the video as your web favorite. You can add it as a playlist. You can flag it. And you can make comments. And from down here, you can see other videos. You can watch from this one. And you can see account where you can sign in to even upload more videos. And then here you can see the history of all the videos and help in case you have any help. And this high is telling you that you are logging automatically. You, you successfully log. When you see a high, it's just telling you that automatically you have successfully logged in. And you can log in and log out here. And this is the browser where you can uh, input the domain uh, name and then browse for. So this is how it looks. And with this, if I present you with this, you actually know what I'm planning to. I know I'm planning to, to implement um, a video um, application like YouTube. So that is um, all we have about techniques of uh, a business analyst. There are so many others. You have up to 50 techniques, but these are the core ones we have to be working with. The most important ones we need to be working with. So uh, this one can get you started. And even as a senior business analyst, uh, you might just be using all these ones. So this, uh, um, the more you have a requirement, um, a business analyst uh, uh, techniques for now. So the next thing we need to do is to move to the next topic. And that is a project framework or project uh, methodology you can use as a business analyst, or you can expect within the project team or, or project environment. The oldest, which has been in uh, use for, uh, for years, which we have um, spoken about within the project management uh, module is uh, waterfall and the agile. Waterfall is a project management approach where project is completed in distinct stages and moved step by step towards ultimate release to consumer. So in waterfall, you don't release a your, your products in stages. 
like uh, you do in uh, agile you have to if you are if you are, if you mean to to implement a website you need to implement everything that's supposed to be there before you release it to the customers to use waterfall was the first software development methodology inherited from manufacturing and construction industry where you can you can't afford to iterate um your your deliverables after you build a tower or a bridge you can't go back to improve it that's the the the, the mindset of what waterfall that you need to build everything if you like a bridge you are building a bridge you need to build everything before it's commissioned and once the bridge is commissioned is commissioned you can only go back if maybe there is a, uh, a problem but you have been commissioned to use like that that's the mindset of waterfall but agile come with a different mindset agile say that no Actually, you can be there releasing your, your, your products bit by bit. You can do that by iterations. So that, that will help you to, to evaluate customers' um, acceptance. If they are happy, and then you keep on collaborating with customers to see how you configure or you, 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 the next functionality will come. You keep asking your, your, your customers what they want to see next. So Agile comprises various approach to uh, software development under which requirements and solution evolves through the collaborative effort of self-organizing and cross-functional teams and their customers through users. So, they collaborate with users to find out what the users want and then they deliver it. And it keeps, they keep doing that continuously, just like what we are we and, the, um, and Facebook is uh, undergoing. You can see that every day, you can just wake up and see another functionality in Facebook. You, they keep on putting functionality gradually that is agile technology, agile mindset. And just like in Romart, you see, we're already using Romart, but now we are beginning to, to, to collaborate with our users to get feedback, to find out more things we are going to. That is the agile mindset. And we keep developing it. And when the user, after having a feedback with, uh, from a user, and uh, at the end of the day, the user sees that uh, that uh, functionality he was suggesting for you to implement, that you actually implemented it. The user is going to be happy. If he's a customer, the customer is going to be happy. And they will tend to stay with you because you give them listening ear. And that's how you use an agile approach to win customers. So let's look at uh, uh, waterfall um, diagram. You see waterfall, that's how waterfall, we use uh, the way waterfall, that's how, that's how the name comes about. You start from requirements, you gather requirements, you plan. After planning, you design, after designing, you develop after developing you test everything and after testing you release and that's how is a, a a rigid project management it's a structured project management and so many companies are beginning to shy away from that rigid nature so this is agile so this is how Agile work. 
agile, you you plan, you design, you develop, you test and deploy, and then you review. The review is when you talk with your um, your customers. You know, so this is how it happened. So, and after then, after the review, you deploy. And this is a sprint one, it's a piece of functionality. So you keep on doing this in a product. It continues and continues and continues and if it has no end. It's a continuous process. It keep on evolving continuously till like as we are now, we don't know when um, Facebook is going to come to an end. As long as Facebook exists, we'll continue to see more functionalities. It's a continuous process. We don't know where they are taking us and we'll continue to follow them because they have been giving us what we want. And the truth is that we are the people suggesting all these things for them. You see, many a times, uh, if you are following uh, uh, the owner of uh, Facebook, Mark, it, uh, he engages users most of the time. And you see people commenting. Whenever he says something, people comment and comment and comment. And that's where he, he, he generates the user's uh, opinion about the product. At times you see up to um, 60 comments, you know, following uh, one topic he, he, raised in a, uh, he raised on Facebook. And at the end of the day, they will review all those comments and then they will know what they are going to do, what else they are, they are going to add. That's there. So many people don't understand what's going on, but that's how it really works. So another thing we are looking here within the project management is a software development life cycle. Mainly we deal um, with the um, business analysis. We, we, we deal most of the, the solution we, we develop for companies are softwares, although some of them are not softwares. But well, most of them are softwares. And um, how do we do software? Like we've seen the um, agile methodology. That's how we do software. Is uh, the first thing we do is uh, we plan, we analyze, we design, we implement, we test and integrate, and then we maintain. Maintain comes here because. We need to maintain um, a software. It needs to be in your plan as a business analyst. When you are trying to develop a software, it must come in your plan. And in our framework, it comes uh, uh, at the closure stage. That's where we, we, we put um, uh, post implementation. <clears throat> Post implementation review, you draft how that software is going to be managed going forward. Now you can see it has been uh, tested and is working and is now integrated within the whole software. So that's deployment. Now, how do you maintain it? So these are the things you must draft how it's going to be maintained, um, updated. I you see how long, like post, within post implementation review, there you can uh, write the change logs. Uh, if there is a bug, or they some can schedule that um, every three, three months or every six, six months, they need to 
to review and update their, their software. So update keeps coming. You know, so these are how you implement a software, um, uh, you, you plan a software development cycle. Then we are not going to waste so much time on the project management because um, we've created this uh, project management. And if we are dealing, we are treating uh, business analysis just uh, as a course, not just as a hybrid, we would have said, OK, let's look at um, um, agile methodology in details. But we are not going to do that because we've treated it within this program, which is project management. So we're not going to waste time there. Um, here, treating a repeating agile methodology is already there. But if you have any, any confusion or anything you don't understand very well, you can ask question during question time. Now, what you are going to look at the, the BA tasks <clears throat> in a project plan. What are the tasks? What are your deliverable of a, a business um, analyst in a project plan? What's your deliverable? What are you going to, to do? And um, I've uh, drafted this from uh, a project um, framework looking at the tasks, the deliverables, and the responsible, the owner. So you know your, oh, your, your responsibility. As you can see here, these are all the tasks that need to be delivered within a project. And who is doing who? Here, to receive project mandates, so that when you are working with a team, you know what you are going to do. It's a more of a racing matrix. You know what you are going to do and what you are not going to do. So if you have a project manager and a business analyst, know your boundary. Because uh, you, at times you see some overzealous uh, business analysts in a project where they have project manager. They will even do their job and start doing the job of a, a business um analyst i've i've done a project where my business analyst uh, is so zealous he's so interested in uh, the role of a project manager he he, he he won't finish his job as a business analyst he started, he started uh, overlapping and start doing my own job so it's good to define boundaries like with this now our racing matrix is defined boundaries. So let's look at here and see the rules involved and what the business analyst does, what the project uh, manager does, and what the PMO does. Receive project mandates. And uh, with that, project charter can come from that. A project ma manager does that, can do that with business analysts, but is the duty of a project manager. Then assemble project team, is the duty of a project manager. <clears throat> Define rules and responsibilities, is the duty of a project manager. Identify school and create project um, charter. Business um, a project manager and do that in collaboration with business analysts. Select project approach is the duty of a project manager can collaborate with business analysts to do that. Identify stakeholders and expectation. Uh, business analysts can do that with project manager as well. Create project strategy document is the duty of project manager and PMO analyst to do that. Create preliminary project plan 
and their work break, breakdown structure is the duty of a project manager and the PMO analyst. Facilitate initial requirement gathering. This is that is data collection. This is the job of a business analyst. Document existing process. This is the job of a business analyst. There is a process mapping. As this process map. Requirement analysis and the gap analysis. Uh, that is a high level requirements and process map. This is the duty of a business analyst. Document future processes. That is a to be process map. This is the duty of a business analyst. Validate high level requirement. This is the duty of a business analyst. Estimate high level requirement. This is the duty of a business analyst. Create a business case. This is the duty of a business analyst. Then commence. This is uh, all these ones I'm saying is uh, the uh, um, within initiate stage, the initiate stage of the project, and the business analyst that need to do all these things is the business business analyst. That's the business BA. Then we come to the fine stage. See here we've um, done our business case. That's the um, our milestone in this uh, stage. Then we we'll come to the fine stage. Uh, in the final stage, uh, you commence read meeting. The project manager or the PMO analyst will commence read meet, meeting to start looking at the, because now the projects have started properly. Now they've validated the business case. The project have started, they've approved the business case. So, and now we started, uh, a, a, a risk can come up at any point. So that is the, the, the reason you have to start your read at this point in time. Is the duty of PMO analyst and project manager. Then list tasks and the uh, activities. That is a work breakdown structure. That is PMO and the uh, project manager. Allocate budgets and the uh, resources. PMO and project manager. Create definitive project plan. Uh, PMO and project manager. <clears throat> then, this is where the, the business analyst uh, start. And the business analyst here is going to be a technical business analyst. You create feature map. Feature map is um, you just map out all the features, kind of epic, epic list all the, the features that are supposed to be contained in that project. That is called epic list, is the business analyst. You create wireframe. We we'll talk about wireframe, is the business um, analyst. You create a use case diagram, is the business analyst. Yeah, this epic list is um, a repetition of, it's still the same thing with this uh, feature map, is a business analyst. The user stories and acceptance criteria, business analyst. Then create test cases, test plan, and test scenario. You see the business analyst. Then you document benefits review plan. Is still the business um, analyst. The benefit review plan is just like uh, the benefits are you going to realize from. Most of you have done that uh, within a. Um, um, business case but here you still need to maybe pull it from the business case and uh, uh, review it so this is what the business uh, analyst does in the fine stage and that's when we are designing the, the solution then we continue to execute stage in the execute stage you groom user stories and acceptance criteria is um, that is refining the user stories? Is a business analyst. You validate your um, user stories. At this point, you still need to get validation 
from uh, maybe the senior uh, business analyst or, or lead BA in order to, or the, the, the sponsor of the product, the product owner, before you start uh, moving the, the user stories to the JIRA for implementation, is the duty of BA. Then when it's been validated and signed off, then you start entering user stories into the JIRA uh, for, for sprint planning and the implementation. And after then, the development tasks, then you start creating a definition of a ready checklist. Definition of ready is making sure that looking at when you do refining, do everything is a kind of a checking, making sure that everything is ready and then the development process will start. Then uh, as the process continues, you keep on refining your backlog, your product backlog within this time around within the JIRA. You keep on estimating the user stories with the developers, adding story points. We've done that already um, in project management. Then sprint planning, you start planning sprints and then sprint execution. We've done sprint planning. You keep on planning your sprints, you finish, and then you deploy, you start another sprint till you finish the whole work that you are meant to be done. And then once we finish, you do the demo and then um, you sign off. Then once you, you do the demo, the UAT, uh, the, you need to do your UAT testing. Uh, that is um, uh, with the quality assurance um, analyst or tester. That can be done by a business analyst as well. Then during that, uh, you do cross browser testing. All these things come under testing. There's a lot of testing, UAT cross browser testing and the document testing report, set up a stage for, to facilitate um, a live environment. And then that's when you need to invite an external user, which is not part of the part of the development team, to come maybe a customer to test the um, the application, and once they, they they test the application and they pass the UAT, that's the last test. Then the project, the the the, the software will be ready for deployment, and then you launch their software. You see the uh, BA that will be responsible for launching launching the software because we are the one that uh, the um, design the software, and then after then we come to closure stage. During closure stage, obtain client acceptance form is the business analyst because you design it and you are the person that to obtain the acceptance form. The project manager manages the project, but the business analyst designed the, the software. So at this point, you close all the risk. All the, all the, this risk means the risk, all the risk and the issues. You close everything because the, pro, the project has come to an end. You need to close it. It's the PMO. Analysts will do that. And the project manager will document the lesson learned reports and then upload everything to the uh, project repository, then you conduct post implementation review. At this point, both PM, uh, project manager, business analyst, and PMO, everybody will be there. And then the business analyst will then update the business case. So you know, it's, you keep on working with the business case. You update your business case at this point, and then upload all reports to repository. The PMO analyst or project manager, in the case where there is no PMO analyst, the project manager can do it. If there is no project manager, BA can equally do it. And then end project um, closure reports. Is the business, um, is the project manager 
that is going to write that uh, report because he is the manager of the project so and close the project and then that's how you, you close your project then that is how it works so this is um um a key deliverables you know so i just itemize it so it become a, you need to this business case business requirement document requirement engineering process high level requirement detail requirement that is low level requirement functional requirements and non-functional requirements uh, use cases use user stories as acceptor these are the core functionalities of a business analyst but as you see the first uh, this team you need to follow it this way because at times you might you might be requested to do more than you might be requested to do more than this you need to uh, that's why it the the, the detailed uh, deliverable of the business analyst is here so and that uh, brings us to the end of um, this particular um, topic or section. Um, this exercise is what you are going to do. But I, I want us to treat this thing before we go to this exercise. I want us to treat the tools before the exercise. Now, what we are going to treat now is the tools. These are the tools you need to have as a business analyst. Some of them, you're already using them. Like here, Zoom, we already know how to use Zoom. Zoom here, the Zoom alternative is um, Skype and the Microsoft team. Well, I think all of us know how to use uh, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft, so it's for, uh, for, for collaboration and uh, requirement uh, gathering uh, uh, facilitating workshop. We all know about that. That's the two. Then here we have a uh, Visio, Microsoft Visio is the is the is the same thing with uh, lucid charts and is the same thing with uh, draw.io they provide the same functionalities then we have um, jira jira we all know jira we've been using jira with confluence confluence is just like um uh base camp but it's owned by the same uh, company that owns Jira. So most of the time they use it together, Confluence and Jira for collaboration. This is Google Doc. You can use Microsoft um, Doc or Google Doc. So Miro is, a, is, a, is very good for brainstorming exercise. So these are the major things. Hangout is for collaboration. Join me, these are for collaboration. Uh, Azure is for continuous uh, pro process improvement. So, but the major ones here, which all of us know, is uh, Draw.io, Jira, Visio, Lucid Charts, Zoom. Once you have all these ones, you are good to go. So there's a lot of functions this um, Lucid chart, Visio, and the draw.io can do. So you need to look into it deeply. This blacksmith is used for wireframing or mockups. So these are the tools we need to concentrate on using. We already know how to use them but we need to look into it deeply. 
more especially, I know I can see that you people love using uh, Lucid Chat. It's very good. Yeah. So you, you know how to use it more. There's a lot of functionality, a lot of things you can do for you as a business analyst. So, so these are the um, exercise. It's going to be our assignment. Uh, you, I, I don't think we are going to do it in group. You just do it personal the way you used to do others. What you need to do is um, uh, you draw a, uh, a diagram. It's going to be um, a mobile app or a website. You need to draw it, identify features, identify the use case for each um, uh, feature selected, and then that's going to be uh, your assignment. I will provide more um, more of this thing, more insight about the, this assignment. Yeah, you need to create user story for the features, and then you create one uh, accept, acceptance criteria for the features. And that is going to be your last um, um, assignment. And uh, once you've done that, you become a junior business analyst. So that's it. See, it's very simple. You can see that to be a junior business, to be a business analyst is not uh, too difficult. Uh, it's not as difficult as you think because you have followed everything carefully and doing all the assignment I'm asking you to do and even finish this last assignment I've given now, then you are a business analyst. That's what they are doing. The only thing that remaining that you need to do is practical, which you will do during your work experience. And uh, I will take a question from you guys now and we'll close. So question time, guys. I see you guys are sleeping. Hello, sir. We are not sleeping. We are not sleeping. No. We are not. We are wide awake. We are right here, sir. Okay. So you, you do understand everything very well. That's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't well, understand the assignment. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm such a good teacher. <laughs> SM is, I don't really understand the assignment. You don't understand the assignment? No. Okay, okay let's look at the assignment again. I'm not even getting the diagram. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to go. I'm try, try with I'm not getting it, sir. That is the assignment. Yes, sir. I will, I, will, I will post it on the um on our group, um, okay. WhatsApp group and uh, Facebook group. What don't you understand the assignment? I said, um, okay. I didn't, uh, for the mobile app. Okay, let's say it's going to be a mobile app or a website. Either a mobile app or a website of your choice. Of your choice. Identify each actor. Identify each actor. Identify features. Identify the use case for the features. Okay, let me go to use case diagram. Let me go to use case diagram. Okay. 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 Let me go to use case diag
This is what I'm asking you people to do. And then create user story. Then create user story. And then create acceptance criteria. That is it. That is it. Okay, so. Are you still confused? No, it's clear. Thank Just you. Just draw the use case diagram. Okay, what I will do is that I will give you people um, that use case diagram to draw. I'll, I'll prefer you to do more work. Use your own uh, initiative this time around. I want to see everybody's. Uh, initiating not just copying my work because this is going to be our last uh, assignment so i want you to add create creativity to your own work i want to see how creative everybody is yeah okay sir yes sir yes sir okay yes sir okay sir so that is um, that is bringing us to the end of um, this section. Um, officially, we have um, finished our training. So it's now for you people to finish your assignments. If you have questions along the way, even within the training, any part of the training you don't understand, you can still ask questions. I'm here to answer questions, you can put question in the group chat, you can put it um, on Facebook, or you can put it in a, go to our website and ask, um, ask those questions. This time I have time to go to the, to the website to be answering questions from the website. So that's it. And then I'll be preparing us for the work experience. So that is that is it for now. So congratulations, everybody, for Thank this you, uh, milestone Thank because uh, this Thank is you, a milestone. And I see all of you started. Uh, most of, most of you started with uh, uh, passion, and the passion yes, since then has been burning. I is very very good. It keeps me motivated as well to do more for you people. And, uh, keep on the burning passion as we progress because this is a, a big investment in your career path. So I'll say good night to everyone. And yeah, keep on collaborating. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I wanted to ask a question. Hey, what question do you have? I wanted my my electricity went off, so I I was locked out. I, I had the question in mind. I'm sorry. Okay, what question? You back. I just well, um. I just wanted to put things there. Uh, I wanted to. Okay, let me ask this question now. I want to really uh, bring this to practical life, guys. Project management, something that has to do with project management. Let me paint a scenario for you. If a client, for instance, tells me to to do a an in-house journal for the organization, and then um, it involves content. That means I have to write the content. I have to get the content from them and write. And then I have to design. I have to print. I want to assume that uh, such can be um, defined as a project, right? It's a big project now. Okay. Now, if, for instance, it's something I do every three months, you know, because I remember when we started this uh, program, you define the a project as something that has a beginning, uh, a start, and an end date. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, it's something we repeat every quarter, 
Can we still call it a project? I don't know. That one, yeah, it's a project now. Uh, when you finish a particular one, that, that particular Okay, so, okay, one, okay, for each one, okay, that's one. okay. Okay, and then my next question is this, sir. With what you have talked about today, uh, looking at uh, Agile and Waterfall, for this kind of project I've just uh, described to you now, I immediately, I, I was looking at Waterfall, I'm like, okay, and for this kind of project, I believe uh, Waterfall is a methodology that fits in, or what do you think? I just wanted you to share your, your expertise, your opinion on this. Uh, waterfall is for structured uh, um, projects. You've already known what you're expecting to do. When you know what you expected to do in a project, you, you, you know the end from the beginning. Mm. Yes. Then it's better to use the waterfall. It's better to use the waterfall. But uh, agile is uh, when um deliverable or when the, 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 the project can even change. You know, mm. the, 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 the customer can change his mind. So it means that you don't really um the end is not really certain from the beginning. So that's why we are using a, a agile because of the flexibility of agile. It's adapt to, to customers changes. But when you already know what you are going to do from the beginning um uh, from the beginning you just mm -hmm. uh, map out your 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 breakdown structure and follow them um sequentially and just deliver it thank you very much mr charles i'm really grateful no problem hello sir i wanted to add something sir okay okay what i wanted to say is this from one of the scenarios she painted now now I want to ask if in the next cycle of projects, when she's going to begin the project, the next, the next project she's going to start, and they decide to implement customers' review and customers' opinion and customers' requirement in their next uh, project cycle, don't you think they are going, they are using agile methodology? That is agile methodology. Mm -hmm. But she didn't say is um is uh you say that you already know what it's going to do from the beginning. Oh, so, but you can combine agile and, um, and waterfall. So we call it a wagile. So, mm -hmm. so you can combine it to give you, you can combine agile with um, um, Six Sigma. You, but these are for her people who are very experienced. So for if you are beginning as a project manager, is is better to use one so you won't make mistake. You know where your problem is coming from. But for experienced project manager, you can combine, you can you know mix up um, a lot of techniques to bring the best solution. But these are for experienced project manager. So you can you might be using a, uh, um, you can use waterfall to plan your projects. And then use uh, agile to implement your project is still acceptable. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, sir. All right. So, team up any more question? Then put it in the in the review and the uh, either in the website or within the group chat. Okay, sir. Yeah. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night.